Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to my presentation. Today, I'll be talking about uh, specifically Black representation in contemporary French cinema. Before I get started, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Caitlin Knox in the French department here at UCA. She's been instrumental in uh, helping me research this topic. Um, I'm um, in a independent study course with her this semester, and a lot of the research from this uh, presentation comes from that class. And so I thank her so much for her patience and also all of her help. So I'd like to start out with this picture right here. So this is at the 71st Cannes Film Festival. Um, and this event is very much a global cinematic um, who's who. And uh, it's a pinnacle of cinematic excellence worldwide. And at this event, um, this group um, that has come to be known as Diasporact, or um, a combination of the words diaspora and action, uh, came together to stage a protest against the uh, continued um, lack of representation and also misrepresentation of Black people in cinema, specifically Black women. Um, this group um, wrote a book called Being Black is Not My Job, um, or in French, Noir n'est pas mon métier. And this follows um, each of these actresses through their struggles in the industry and also through their struggles being Black in France. So today I'll be asking the question, how do Black protagonists in contemporary French film represent race in the so-called universal France? And I'll get to talk about a little bit of what universal means um, in a bit, but overall we'll be looking at French films and how the characters in those films can tell us a little bit about um, what it means to be specifically Black in France. So overall I'll start with um, explaining a little bit about what race means in France. Then I'll move on to talking about recognizing Blackness in France and how difficult it is for a lot of activists to um, talk about being Black in France. And then I'll move on to a film presentation of three fictional films, um, each having themes that help explain um, how a lot of Black people feel in France. And then finally, I will move on to a conclusion to wrap everything together. So first we'll start out with understanding the Universal Republic of France or this idea of a colorblind France. So the word race in, in France is actually taboo. Most people don't use that word. <laughs> um, it's also you know, something that the government does not recognize. It's actually illegal in France to collect racial statistics of any kind, um, whether it be for a census or anything. So it's been very hard for people of color to really um, you know, show themselves as being, um, to actually prove to other people that they're you know, receiving different treatment than um, white French people. Um, and all of this comes to the idea of a single indivis indivisible French Republic, stemming from a lot of um, Republican ideas that come from the French Revolution. Um, a lot of French society has come to adopt the idea that France is one single unit and anything that takes away from that cohesion is wrong. So race is often talked about still, although it's not talked about on paper, um, it's talked about indirectly through the lens of immigration. So because France has such a storied history with colonialism specifically, um, it's, a lot, a lot of immigrants from their former colonies, particularly in North Africa and in West Africa, have came to France to find economic opportunities. And so France has talked about race through the lens of immigration rather than addressing uh, skin color or ethnic origin. Um, they typically collapse everything in one and in, into that immigration category. Um, race, when talked about specifically, um, is often called a problem from the United States, as the U.S. has such a storied history with slavery, with segregation, 
uh, a lot of that has fueled the rhetoric that race is just something that has been constructed in the United States. It's not something that we really need to have in France, even though a lot of the racial divisions are already in place in the Republic. Um, they just don't talk about them through name. And that is kind of the problem with the colorblindness overall that you see in France. And race is seen as something that divides the Republic. It's um, like I said, it takes away from that universal image that um, France is trying to portray. And typically when people go against the grain and they try to, you know, they stage protests like I have in this picture. Um, this picture actually comes from the wake of um, George Floyd's killing here in the United States. Um, a lot of that echoed um, to France. And whenever people stage protests like this or they, you know, want to hold on to their culture, um, a lot of political pundits will use the word communitarianism or communitarianisme to describe that. Um, the creation of communities within France that break up the overall um, idea of the individual republic. And so typically the word communitarianism is used as a derogatory way of talking about racial groups showing out and being um, in solidarity with each other. So because of this sort of taboo surrounding race, a lot of French academics have actually started working in the United States. And two notable um, people who worked or um, are currently working in the United States from France um, on the subject of um, blackness in France would be Aboula Soumarou and Mam Fatunyang. Um, both of them co-wrote a piece called um, The Need to Translate the An and Anchor the Black Experience in France. Um, and this work is sort of a call to action to create um, communities and new vocabulary for talking about race in France. Because in fact, um, because they don't, they use this colorblind lens, it's very hard to express the difficulties that a lot of people of color face in France. And so for each of these academics, it's important to um, find a way for people to express their um, the problems that they're experiencing in France. And specifically, um, Mam Fatunyang created um, a film along with Katie Nielsen, um, an American director, called Marianne Noir. And this is a documentary film that was created in 2016. And um, it follows seven um, Black French women and talks about their specific experiences. So um, Marianne, um, from Marianne Noir comes from a sort of figure, a mythical figure in France, kind of like Our Lady Liberty. Marianne is seen as the like um, image of Republican value. So, um, you know, liberty, égalité, and fraternité, the three values of the French Republic um, are all embodied by Marianne. And Marianne herself is always depicted as white, never as, any other race when, you know, in fact, France is um, very culturally diverse and there's people from all over the world who live there. And so Marianne Noir, um, the film wants to explore what it means to um, be specifically a black woman in France. And um, in this film, she lets each of the seven women um, talk about their experiences candidly. So um, several of them are um, you know, working in academia, but then there's others um, who are entrepreneurs, dancers, artists, um, filmmakers um, who are in the film. And they each explore a different facet of what it means to be um, a Black woman in France and also what it means to be Black in France overall. And each of these narratives are tied together with um, vignettes, um, artistic vignettes that show um, a lot of these um, ideas and themes being acted out in, um, in daily life. So from this film, I found that there were several themes that carry over into overall the overall experience that a lot of Black people feel in France. So the first one would be a sense of stereotyping. And that means that they have you know, all of these different ideas. Um, French society has all these ideas of what it means to be Black and um, different ideas of who Black people are. 
So a lot of these overlap with stereotypes in the US. We find a lot of them also overlap with um, immigrant sentiments, um, but that was very much something that came through in the experience, experiences of these women. Then you have the idea of banlieueisation. So the banlieue is um, the suburbs surrounding a large city um, like Paris or Marseille. Um, these are areas where a lot of immigrants live and a lot of uh, media and a lot of people in France like to collapse the experience of being black, for example, with living in the suburbs. And a lot of these women talk about how that has negatively affected them. Then there's the idea of Europe European beauty standards. Of course, the idea that one needs to have straight hair, um, that you know, um, traditional African hair is not um, you know, professional. A lot of those ideas still exist. Um, not just in the US, but also in France as well. And a lot of these women had to deal with um, those ideas growing up um, of looking different than their white French peers. And then also the idea of black erasure, the idea that being black doesn't make you French and that the French Republic is white um, and that black people don't exist in the French Republic. And this is something that a lot of the women expressed because a lot of them also come from immigrant families and that um, coming from Africa, they never felt like they were able to feel French. But then also there were women who were from the um, Caribbean Departement um, of France, which is part of um, France overall, um, and still feeling like they aren't French, even though they were born French citizens in a French territory. So going off of these themes and going off of this background, I'd like to explore three films and talk about how they interact with um, the French idea of race. So how does race represent it in film if it doesn't exist in France or at least in the minds of people in France? So the first one I'll be talking about is It is Intouchable, which is a 2011 film and it's directed by Olivier Nekash and Eric Toledano. So this film um, follows the characters um, Philippe, played by François Cluzet, and Tris, played by Omar Sy. Um, uh, Philippe is paraplegic. He um, loses the ability to um, use his arms and legs and is um, a wheelchair user. And um, he's looking for someone to help him with his daily tasks. And Dries comes and applies for the job, knowing that he's not necessarily qualified, but he needs the job to apply for um, unemployment funds. And so after he applies, Philippe actually takes a liking to him and um, the two end up living together and um, uh, Therese helps Philippe become more confident in his life. So this film was um, very much an international hit and it was even popular in the US so much so that they had a English language remake with Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston. But also because of this international claim, um, it received a lot of um, backlash from American critics regarding the racial stereotypes that take place in the film. So one of these stereotypes, as I mentioned in the summary, is that you know, black people um, live off the government or use benefits. And this is something that we see a lot in the United States as um, Dries, is living off of unemployment. Then we have the hypersexualization of um, Black people. In this particular uh, film, Dries's character is very hypersexual and very much um, like flirting with all the women that he sees, um, very much a hypersexual character. But then also we have the introduction of the magical Negro trope, which is something, it's a coin, uh, term coined by Spike Lee, talking about how there um, is a black character who exists only for the benefit of the white character in the film. And this film really exemplifies this because Dries pretty much is only there to help Philippe and is never really receiving any character development. Philippe is the only one who's, you know, getting in relationships, you know, growing as a person. And Dries is kind of just there to, to help him and use his charisma to help him reach that. So a lot of these stereotypes and tropes um, 
exist in this film and that was picked up on by a lot of American film critics, but not necessarily French film critics. Then we have the film Bande de Filles by Céline Sciamma. Um, Sciamma is a very celebrated film director. She's um, received several accolades for her most recent film, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Um, this film follows the character of um, Mariam, who lives in the banyu of Paris, the suburbs of Paris. And it's sort of a coming age film of her, you know, growing up and meeting friends. But this film um, does something that um, I was mentioning earlier with the film Marianne Noir. Um, a lot of the women in Marianne Noir talked about the banlieueisation or the equivocation of being black and living in the banlieue. And this film kind of does some of this. Um, Manfap Tunyong um, herself actually wrote about this film and talked about how this film makes those equivocations between blackness and the banlieue and, um, you know, doesn't really do a lot of distinguishing between the two. Um, specifically, the scene here, um, which is one of my favorite scenes in the film, it's one of the most visually stunning. Um, the group of girls, um, including Maryam, go to a hotel and they're hanging out and having fun and they're dressed up nice and they're um, they're actually dancing to an American pop song by Rihanna, um, a black artist. And it really shows that, um, you know, the beauty um, in blackness. But the problem is, is that this image is never juxtaposed against, you know, what it means to live in the banyu. They're seen as the same thing. You see throughout the film, Mariam becoming increasingly involved in violence and in um, drug culture. Um, which, you know, is never really distinguished from her being Black and living, just happening to live in the banyu. So, you know, a lot of the characters um, have this sort of um, rough around the edges look. Um, and really, it seems like her development into someone who's involved in this criminal underground has to do a lot with her Blackness rather than it being a product of her surroundings. Um, which is which was one of the critiques that a lot of American film critics picked up on. Finally, we have the film um, Il a déjà tes yeux. Um, he even has your eyes. This is a French comedy film uh, from 2016, directed by Lucien Jean Baptiste, who also plays the father in the film. So this follows a couple who adopts a white child, and of course, in France, um, you know being colorblind, you're not supposed to recognize that, you know, there's anything strange about a couple adopt, a black couple adopting a white child, but everybody picks up on this and tries to talk around the subject and tries to, you know, and, and you see the white characters and the black characters feeling uncomfortable about a black couple having a white child. And so I really enjoy this movie because it picks up on a lot of those themes of French society being uncomfortable with race and subverts them by, you know, by seeing how people would interact in a situation like this. So talking about um, this film takes a lot of cues from um, subverting stereotypes and talking about what it means to um, adopt a child um, transracially. Um, but like I said, it, it's an overall comment on how society works in France with regards to race. So one of the most interesting scenes in this film um, is when the couple walks in to um, the adoption agency. So at this point, they don't know that they um, that the child that they're going to be offered to adopt is white. And on the walls, you see um, these pictures of white couples with children of color. And it's very interesting because this is also a trope in the United States, um, white couples adopting kids who aren't white, um, but you never really see in media examples of parents of color adopting white children. And um, this film is trying to, you know, make the claim that, um, you know, in a French universalist society where everybody um, is the same and there's no difference, there's still, people still feel that anxiety when they confront um, race and they feel uncomfortable with race. 
And so this film really embodies that idea of subverting the um, universalism of the French Republic and the colorblindness of the French Republic. So to conclude, um, I'd like to say that the importance of understanding uh, representation in French cinema also affects how um, representation works in the United States. Um, I think a lot of I, the idea of being colorblind and not looking at race as something as important as it really is um, takes us away from real change and real substantive um, action when it comes to racial equality and racial equity. So um, these, fil these films actually um, in their content reveal something about race in general um, in France and in the United States. And they help us reflect on how we can better improve racial equity as a whole. So thank you so much for listening and I appreciate your time.